Hi everybody, welcome to Calculus. This is going to be one fabulous class this year. This is your teacher, Mrs. Klein. Everybody say, hi Mrs. Klein. Uh, you will get to know her very well throughout the course of this year. Now get ready for a super lesson. Now we're going to start with review. Now, the first place we will start is with lines. Now the most important thing you need to know about lines is that they have slope, which is rise over the run, or you know how they decrease or increase. That's very important to know throughout the whole year. And two very important equations you have to know related to slope are either the point-slope equation or the slope-intercept equation. And that is it for lines. Another important aspect of calculus you would need to know are functions, you know, equations. And these functions consist of dependent and independent variables, or domains and ranges, or simply put, the domain or the independent variable is the x, and the dependent or range is the y. And uh, you will also need to know about open intervals and closed intervals. That's pretty much just... Uh, for an open interval, you have a line with two circles that aren't filled in, and for a closed, a line with two circles at the end that are filled in. And then you will also need, like, you will need to know about even and odd functions. Even functions are just symmetric about the y-axis, such as y equals x squared, and an odd function is has rotational symmetry around the origin, or you rotate it 180 degrees, and it's the same function. And so yeah, that is an odd function. Okay, now for exponents. The main thing you need to know regarding exponents are the rules of exponents, which are right here. Now, the first rule is a to the x times a to the y equals a to the x plus y. What does that mean? Let's use an example. So if a would equal 5 and x would equal 2, or actually I want to use 3, times 5 squared, that would be the same as 5 to the 3 plus 2, or 5 to the 5th, if you can read my handwriting. The second rule, a to the x over a to the y equals a to the x minus y. So, if that would be 5 cubed over 5 squared, that would be the same thing as 5 to the 3 minus 2, or just 5 to the 1st, or 5. The third rule, a to the x to the y, or a to the y to the x, or which would also equal a to the xy. So, 5 squared, or cubed, cubed squared would be the same thing as 5 squared cubed, which would also equal 5 to the 2 times 3, which would equal 5 to the 6th. Now the fourth rule is a to the x times b to the x equals ab to the x. So, Using our previous example, 5 cubed times, and let's say b is 3, so 3 cubed would be the same thing as 5 times 3 cubed, which would equal 15 cubed. Alright, the fifth rule is a over b to the x equals a to the x over b to the x. So, using our previous example, 5 over 3 cubed is the same thing as 5 cubed over 3 cubed. And then one more thing you need to know regarding exponentials is the number e, which is a really long, irrational number. But just remember, it is a number, and you will use that quite a lot throughout the year. Okay, now this is the general form of an exponential function. y equals k times a to the x, where k, a constant, has to be greater than zero. And the two forms of this now would be, it would grow if a is greater than 1, or decay if it is between 0 and 1, and an example of decay would be half-life, where a would equal 1 half. Another important idea to know is inverses. And to get an inverse, it's real simple. You just swap the x and y data points in a set of data, or in a function, swap the y and x variables, and then solve for what y equals in terms of x. And it is denoted by this. Now, a very important inverse to know is the logarithm, which is the inverse of an exponential function, which is denoted by log base a of x. Now, two very important logarithms to know is the logarithm with base e, which is then denoted as ln of x, 
or the logarithm with base 10, which is just denoted as the log of x. And these two right here is what will appear on your calculator and are very important to know. So now for a brief overview of trig. The first thing you have to remember is that all trig measurements are taken in radian mode, not degrees. So for your calculators, make sure they're in radian mode. Now for the other thing, there are six main trig functions we deal with. The sine, the cosine, the tangent, the cosecant, sequent, and cotangent. Now, the sine in reference to a right triangle is simply the opposite over the hypotenuse for the angle. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent is the opposite over adjacent. The cosecant is the opposite over hypotenuse, the secant is the opposite over adjacent, and the cotangent is the adjacent over hypotenuse, or actually simply just the cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine, the secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, and the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. Here are some tips for working on the AP exam preparation. Um, throughout the year, what you want to do is pay your fee on time. Take good notes, work with others in study groups, mainly Asian study groups. Um, review on a regular basis. Evaluate your test-taking strengths and weaknesses. The week before, you want to combine independent and group review. Get tips from your teacher. Do lots of mixed review problems. Check your exam date, time, and location. And review the appropriate AP calculus syllables, which is AB. And you might also want to pick up some worksheets and practice tests for Ms. Klein as well as one of her AP books. She likes it when you do that. The night before, you want to put new batteries in your calculator. Make sure your calculator is on the approved list. Do a short review and go to bed at a reasonable hour. The day of the exam, you want to get up a little earlier than usual and eat a good breakfast and then go to your exam location 15 minutes early. And on your exam night, just relax. You earned it.